Wow, I got the whole beach to myself. The whole island is getting pounded out right now. North, south, east side. There's a hurricane coming in. Crazy swells right now. So I drove across the island and found this little beautiful spot. This spot sucks for diving, but if you got yourself a secret weapon, you can make it happen. I got a bunch of fish carcasses that I've been saving up, so we're gonna take her out and try and get some fish. Hoping to get a nice big fat uku, but you just never know with those guys. A bunch of goat fish would be pretty awesome too. So I'm gonna unpack and get everything ready. That was a lot tougher than I thought. I never wield the secret weapon on sand yet. That was pretty tiring. But I got it there. Now I gotta go suit up and get in the water. I live up in the mountains, so I don't get to dive that much. I dive like once every two weeks. People think I dive like all the freaking time, but I never get to jump in the water, so whenever I see the water, I just get super, super pumped up. The adrenaline starts dumping, and all this hard work is gonna pay off. How's this paint job, huh? Got the war paint on. You know what time it is. It's time to go get it. Let's go put in some work. Being stuck in the mountains, I ain't messing around with the with the war paint. The sun's gonna freaking cook me to a crisp. Oh, look at that beautiful water though. Finally got everything done and I am ready to launch.
and it is just so gorgeous out here. The water is looking super dirty, but I'm gonna head out to some deeper zones and hopefully the water clears up. I've been going through a lot of stress lately, so this is just exactly what I needed. It's so relaxing and peaceful out here on the water. Just kinda puts you back in with mother nature. But even when you're stressed out, it's always about having a Positive attitude. <laughs> Nothing else matters with a positive attitude. So uncle is putting in the work today. Man, I am coming out with a fish. If I don't, I'm gonna shoot a big fat okole on my way in. Whew, I'm exhausted. Been paddling, kicking around, and I found some clear water, so jump in check out these zones and if they're junky then I'm gonna change spots obviously <laughs> but the water's looking pretty nice so let's go check them out when I'm diving these dead zones I usually gotta travel pretty far to find fish. And when I do catch fish, I like to fillet them and I freeze all the bones and scraps so I can give it back to the Aina. It usually takes me a while to save up a big amount like this, but it's one of my favorite things to chum with. I just love the way the bones fall to the ocean floor. Plus it feels so good to know that I didn't waste anything. These scraps will feed something in the ocean. It kind of completes the circle of life process. I dropped out a Milu head and then I spotted something swim directly over it and started to make a bunch of commotion. As I get near, I notice that it's a spotted eagle ray doing some foraging. Their tail can equal three times their width of their body. And it usually has one to five venomous spines at the base of the tail. So I don't want to get Steve Irwin. So I enjoy the show from a distance. Once he spots me creeping out on him though, he dips out. This was a really cool drop. I spot a fat Moana Kali from the surface, but as I get near to the bottom, I see a ton of taco playing around. You can see these two tacos on the bottom here. And there's another one up by the Moana Kali. I try to attract the Kali closer to me. And then the taco sprays his ink everywhere to help me bust a Houdini and disappear into the reef. The taco on the left moves in for a closer kill shot view. I thank this taco for helping me out. And then I grab my shooting line off the coral head and head to the surface with the delicious Moana Kali. I drifted for a while and then I landed into this murked out zone. I get surrounded here by a big school of Veke Nonos. They named them Nono because they are so hard to shoot. The one that I wanted was playing hardball, so I go for one of my favorite fish to eat in the whole world. I was over that murky spot, so I jump into my big ass yacht and tell the captain to take me to a better spot. I jump in and I land right next to this massive manta ray. These guys can get a wingspan of over 20 feet and weigh over a ton. Thankfully they are pretty much harmless to humans. This guy spots me flying in so he turns around to check me out and I gotta give him some aloha and throw on the shaka. I'm pretty much just standing here, hovering about two feet from the ground because I didn't want to step on any Vana. 
There's a lot of Vana around. This spot ended up being super dead, so off to the next one. As I'm swimming up, I notice this guy kind of looks like the Batman symbol. I land right on this big squishy taco and he stuffs himself into this tiny hole. I don't really kill taco anymore because I find them to be such fascinating creatures. I just love watching them move around and looking at me and stuff. It has to be a pretty special occasion in order for me to take one. Sometimes however I do like to mess with them once in a while. So I poke this guy out of the hole. And instantly this table boss swoops in for a bite. The tuckle flashes him with a warning sign and the table boss backs off. I would have felt so bad if that table boss just whacked him right in front of me. <laughs> I was thinking about turning this table boss into some chum right here, but he backed off my buddy so I let him go. And then I spot something tasty off in the distance so I get super low and I track him towards me. I must have bumped my camera getting off the yak because it's kind of tilted pretty low. But thankfully I got myself a delicious fat munu. This monocali really made me work for it. It took me a while to attract him towards me because he was super far away. But now that I got him close to me, he ain't really presenting a clean shot. I had to get really low and be super patient for my opportunity to smash him. Nice size one though, and I'm fully loaded on goats now. I got three Kali's and one Munu. I found this cool overhang right next to this big boulder. So I slide right on in and I get greeted by this fat lobster. It's not lobster season right now. And also this is a female lobster. So all I can do is Throw on the fat shaka and give it a veke nono touch. This is a pretty sweet hiding spot though. I spot a couple of fat moana collies right here. I take a peek behind me hoping a big fat uku followed me in here but nada. I was thinking about plugging the collie right here, but I got plenty already. So I just let him go. Boom, next drop and there's a couple of Amilus that followed me down to the bottom. More monocolies, but right now my main focus is on some schmookus. I haven't seen any ukus yet, and I've been burning through my chum like crazy. Nothing has been coming in and whacking the chum. Pretty shocking, but that's what you get in these dead zones. Mm -hmm. One last peek behind me in hopes that there's a uku back there, but nothing. So I head back to the surface for some fresh air. I head out to the deeper waters and start dumping the rest of my chum. Even though nothing has been whacking my chum so far, 
It is a really nice feeling to give the fish back and clean out my freezer finally. My freezer always ends up turning into a cryogenics lab for all these fish carcasses. I take one last deep drop to explore the bottom and bada bing bada boom! A massive uku starts charging right at me on my way down. Just like that my dreams get shattered and I realize it's just a kahala. A school of three decent sized ones. I spot more collies off in the distance, but I don't want to eat these guys, so I just enjoy my time down here and hope a uku's gonna roll in. I take a peek behind me and I'm just praying that there's that fat uku finally coming in, but no luck for me today. I'm super stoked on my goats though. I made it happen in this dead zone, so I make my way back up to the surface and get ready to head in. Back at the crib, I got the world famous master chef who flew all the way in from Pohoa town just to prepare these goat fish up. I'm back! Today we're going to make the only recipe I know how to make, my famous ceviche. So let's go! I cut up a lot of goat fish and then... I moved on to chopping up some red onion, some cilantro, I milked a coconut, got some limes, some lemons, and some fresh mango. And the mango was picked right off of that tree right there. First, we gotta cook the fish with some lemon and lime juice. Just squeeze them right onto your fresh fish like so. Get it all over your fish. And now we're gonna give it a good stir. Make sure all your lemon and lime juice is coating the fish. Okay, hard part is done. Now we're gonna do the fun part. Mango. Juicy. I know you guys are thinking I'm a really good chef, but I promise you guys can do this recipe too. Onion. <laughs> Whoa. It's okay. We love onion. Everyone loves onion. Time to spice it up, guys. Last time we did a cooking show out here, you guys were really upset uh, that we were risking the food on the ledge, so we built this table just to solve for that. So I hope you guys are happy that the food is safe on the table and not on the ledge. Cilantro time. Last but not least <laughs> is our homemade hand milked coconut milk. Oh yeah. 
All right, we got everything mixed in. We're gonna leave this beauty in the fridge for a few hours and do a taste test. Make sure it turned out good. All right, so it's been sitting in the fridge for a couple hours. So let's give this a try. You can really taste the mango, the onion, the sweetness of the coconut milk, the softness of the goat fish and the lime it just tastes really really fresh super delicious the seasonings and the cilantro it's just a well balanced mix of flavors definitely recommend you guys try it you want to be a taste tester? Do you want to taste test this ceviche? Okay, I set. it. What do you think? <laughs> mm. <laughs> the lemon, huh? The lime juice? That hurricane that I was talking about in the beginning of the video was the hurricane that ended up spreading that devastating fire on Maui. When I heard about Lahaina, I just couldn't believe it. It's still really hard for me to grasp the reality of the situation. Every day that goes by, it just seems to be getting worse and worse. I lived on Maui for a while and I even had a small business there. I can't even imagine losing everything to a fire. A couple of my friends were affected by the fire, but thankfully we didn't lose anybody. I'm sure everyone that has wanted to help has done so by now, but if you wanna check out some more ways to help, I'll leave some links in the description along with the organization that I donated to. Mahalo for watching and big mahalos to everyone who has been helping Maui out. Chee